feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp. Hey everybody, welcome to the post-show wrap-up of The Shrimp Tank. I'm your co-host Ted Jenkins, sitting here with my co-host Chris Hanks, who's the executive director and founder of the Shore Center for Entrepreneurship. Great things going on at Kennesaw State University. We're joined on the mic today by Joey Ruse, and no, fans, he is not skipping school. He is actually not only a part-time student, but also an employee now of Kennesaw State University. It just speaks volumes to what's happening at the entrepreneurship program at Kennesaw State. We're joined by our guest today. Charlie Jones, who's a managing partner at Marshall Jones. We heard great stuff today on the podcast all about not just accounting, but about running a business and hiring millennials and what you need to do if you have to outsource accounting in your business. You should listen to the entire broadcast at shrimptankpodcast.com or download us on iTunes. This is your chance to get an MBA right here. This is where book smarts and street smarts collide right here on the Shrimp Tank. And Charlie, we talked on the show today about a lot of things. And a lot of people complain about what's happening with Trump, but this new tax law went into effect here in 2018. And a lot of business owners are asking this very simple question. Should I stay as an S corporation in my business or with the new tax law, is it time for me to convert my business and become a C corp? And I'm wondering what you can tell some of our entrepreneurs here in the post-show wrap-up. Yeah, that probably is the biggest thing that um, came out of the law that has a lot of um what ifs in it. Um, the um, uh, C corporations, of course, got the immediate uh, 21 percent um, uh, reduction to 21 percent, and you see what's happening with the big, big corporations uh, in terms of the bonuses they're giving and um, and so forth and so on. Our the space that we're playing in is with um, private, privately held companies that are anywhere from 100 million down to you know 100,000, and right. and only with contractors that uh, we have that that are C corporations because they have to retain a lot of um, uh, earnings in their business for um, purposes of bonding and that sort of thing. Um, um, S-Corps and LLCs make the most sense for um, most businesses. Now, what did the uh, law do to offset the fact that C-Corporations are getting the 21% um, um, you know, deduction uh, tax rate? And what they did is they created a 20% deduction for uh, pass-through entities, and those are S-Corps and, and um, uh, LLCs and sole proprietorships. But the 20% is, is is a kind of a, a tricky sort of animal. It is 20% of qualified business income, and I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you what that's all about. But um, so um, there's lots of different permutations and commuta- uh, computations of how they can take advantage of that 20%. Um, but um, so it's 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 giving us tremendous opportunities with our clients to uh, to plan. Wow, and and planning is obviously something that you do well, both for your company and your clients. And we talked a lot on the show about millennials and how your company has kind of transformed, created like a a 2.0 version of itself to implement millennials into the workplace. So can you talk about how you've not only um, gotten millennials, but you've also retained them as your companies continue to grow? Yeah, um, as we talked about earlier, this is uh, my co-founding partner uh, died nine years ago, and I'm not a spring chicken. So the idea is, um, if um, you know, if we're going to uh, keep this firm um, alive for the next 30, 40 years, um, how do we do that? And that was our, our goal from the start. So what um, what we decided to do is we wanted to grow, and we wanted to grow with you with young people. And how do you do that with a, with a firm that has one partner that um, has died, and the other partner is not getting any younger? And the way to do it is to create an environment of growth and give the millennials the things that they want. Um, and um, so, like I said, we didn't set out to say we're going to go get a bunch of millennials, but the what we've done is created an atmosphere of growth and created um, um, pers- policies, procedures, and, and things that millennials love. Flex time, uh, work-life balance, I would say, is number one. Uh, being part of the um, the firm and, and feeling um, you know that they're going to have upward mobility, that's why we've got to grow. And um, and giving them um, uh, training. Uh, so so th- those are the things. And, and the, there's just such a shortage of experienced people out there that we decided to bring in the young folks and, and, and bring them along. And so and we had a really good conversation about exit planning, succession planning on, on the show. Um, is it, Can you elaborate a little bit more on what advice you would give to other business owners that are watching this, that how can they um, uh, take an intentional approach to succession planning like you have? 
Right. The um, uh, what, what they need to do is realize that they're not going to live forever, and they need to have a, a plan in place. Um, we have a lot of our clients have family businesses. There are whole issues there um, with their, are the kids going to get in the business and so forth. Uh, what we try to do is point out to them that if they don't have a plan in place, um, you know, it, it could be uh, could be ugly. So um, I, having gone through that myself, I have a plan in place for um, either the sale of my business, uh, if I ever get um, um uh, we're at the point where I'm not having so much fun, or uh, or I die, and that plan in place is that the people that are there will um, will own it, and they will pay me if I sell it, or my estate if I die, over a period of time. Uh, that's one succession plan. There's all kinds of them, and I know Ted is a good one to be able to uh, um, help on that. We 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 don't try to be all things to all people, but we know when our clients don't have that in place, and and where where we can't handle that, we send them to professionals like Ted that can take care of the state planning and all that. So we're in the middle of tax season. What's the average amount of hours an accountant typically works during tax season? I would say the average number of hours that a typical accounting firm requires of their people is um, uh, upwards of 60 to 70 and maybe even above. Um, our team um, probably works an average of 55 hours during tax wow. season. And we mentioned on the show we talked all about the things. You still energize at 73 and still... Yeah. Taking names and doing you know what while Absolutely. you're out there. So you have a favorite beer? You mentioned beer on the show as a favorite beer. Uh, Corona's a nice beer. I like that. Um, I like it. Yeah. Corona. That's what I'm talking about here. So for folks that are watching the post show wrap up and they need to get some uh, outsourced accounting or they need to get their books cleaned up or they need to have that decision about how they can make their company work more efficiently for them, how should folks that are watching the post show wrap up get in touch with you and learn more about Marshall Jones? Uh, the best way is just to get on our website, marshalljones.com, two L's and Marshall, and you'll find everything you need, uh, phone numbers, emails, and everything about our firm, and uh, uh, that's, that's the way to do it. Well, folks, it's so funny here in the post-show wrap-up that most people that own a business, the thing they don't realize is you can look at expenses like labor and payroll, all those kinds of things, but the number one expense most businesses pay is taxes. So to not set yourself up with somebody like Charlie Jones or set somebody up that actually looks at this stuff, you are going to fall short of where you need to be when you grow your business. And that's the post-show wrap-up of The Shrimp Tank. Like a shark in a shrimp tank Big fish, small pond